mercy and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. Dear friends in Christ, the Old Testament lesson will serve as the basis for us considering and, and thinking on the Word of God for a moment, and particularly the name that is associated with the king who was prophesied to come through Jeremiah. And that name says this, and this is the name by which he will be called the Lord, our righteous savior. This translation, a little bit different from what we read earlier, but the translation is true. Um, the Lord, our righteous savior. So when the king will come, uh, and when he did come, uh, the text says, the prophecy says, that he will be named the Lord, our righteous Savior. I'd like to have us look at each of those parts of his name. The Lord, our righteous Savior. Each of those. We begin with the Lord. And if you look at the text very carefully, that uh, the Lord is all capitalized. So that is actually referring in the Hebrew text to Yahweh. This one who is to come, this king who will come and ride a, humbly on a donkey is Yahweh. That's the name God gave to himself. That's the name which identifies who the creator of the universe is. It's Yahweh. And in seven days he created this planet and human beings in it. It's that Yahweh. That Yahweh will come one day as king. This is the same Yahweh who selected Abraham and his descendants to be a special line through which Yahweh himself would come into the world. This is the same Yahweh who cared for Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and the 12 sons. It's the same one. It is this one who led them into Egypt and cared for them in Egypt for hundreds of years. And then with a mighty hand and great power, this Yahweh delivered the people from the hands of the Egyptians. He broke Pharaoh's power and he led his people out through the Red Sea, which was parted by Yahweh. And this same one blessed the nation with a promised land that was flowing with milk and honey. And he blessed his people. And he guided the people through kings, King David and King Solomon. It is this Yahweh who one day is prophesied to come. It is this Yahweh who also went and delivered the people into the land of Babylon so that they could come and repent over their idolatry. But he also gathered them back from that land 70 years later and blessed them just as he promised. It is that Yahweh who one day would come and one day be king who would reign wisely and do what is just and right in the land. The king is Yahweh himself. Of course, that's what we teach. That's what the Bible teaches. And here we're reminded that when Jesus came into the world, this was the one who did all of those things in the Old Testament days. The Lord, Yahweh, he will be called. Then secondly, Yahweh is ours. He's ours. It doesn't say the Lord, the righteous Savior. He's not just a righteous Savior, but he is our 
righteous Savior. Or the text could have said, the Lord, their righteous Savior. It could have said, those people over there, the special ones, the ones who are bloodline of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. He could have said, that one, the Lord, uh, is their righteous Savior. But he doesn't. He says the Lord is our, our. Even though you and I treated Yahweh as if he was insignificant, as if he was not important, you and I all went like sheep going astray and wandered away from him just like Adam and just like Eve and just like all the other terrible sinners recorded in the Bible and living today. You don't deserve to be included here as the one that this Yahweh comes to. But God, in his grace and mercy, will call Jesus, does call Jesus, Yahweh our righteous Savior. He's yours. When Jesus came into the world, he came into the world for you. Even though you said, God, so many times, I don't want you. I don't want you to be mine. And you went off on your own ways. But God in his grace and mercy comes to you as well. And so therefore, this pronoun is here, the Lord, our righteous Savior. He's yours. We go on. The Lord our righteous. This king who comes in the world, who came and will come again, this king who will reign wisely and do what is just and right in the land, this one is righteous. Now we can compare this king with the other kings in this world and the other political leaders in this world. And how true it is as we look at all human leaders in this world, how troubled we are when we see how they lead and how they reign and how they rule. I don't know about you, but I look and am very concerned about how the leaders of this world rule. It seems as if they are not as righteous as I would want them to be. They're all trapped just like you and me into the unrighteousness of your unrighteousness of our souls. Uh, but not this king. This king is completely righteous. When he came into the world the first time, he came into the world and for 33 years, he never once served himself. He never once put a priority on himself. He was never filled with a moment or thought of selfishness and self-concern like you are and like I am. Oh no, for all 33 years of his life, when he came, this Yahweh, who is ours, he lived a perfect life. Never for a moment, not even a moment, never even a thought, not a single thought was anything but according to the will of his father. He's righteous. And he's ours. And he's Yahweh. And then finally, the Lord, our righteous Savior. He didn't come into the world to be a king, although he is. He didn't come into the world to rule over you and me, although he does. He came into the world with a specific purpose. The Lord, our righteous Savior. It isn't the Lord, our righteous judge. It's not the Lord, our righteous creator. Even though he are, is those things, he wants to be known to the world, to you and me as well as a righteous Savior. And inside those words is the truth about why he came. He came 
to be a king so that he could save his subjects. He, could, he came so that in the end he could die to take away sin so that the word our could be there. He is your savior. And he took upon himself your sin so that he might deliver you from that sin forevermore. He's a savior. Oh, to be sure, he could be a judge. He could come and he could point his finger and he could say, uh, you didn't measure up this past week. He could do that. But that's not who he is. That's not what he wants to be. He wants to be known as the righteous savior, the one who comes to you and says, I took your sin upon myself and I washed it away by my blood so that I could save you. He wants to save you from the entanglements of sin, which still hold on to you and hold on to me on a, on a daily basis. And he says, I want to be known as the Savior who's going to deliver you from your sin. And he does. He could come and he could be called many, many things. But what he really wants is to be known as your righteous Savior. Because he is these things, Yahweh, our righteous Savior, we do not fear when we anticipate his return. We do not fear during this season of Advent. We don't fear that he will come and judge, he will come and punish. No, he took the punishment and completed that, and now he comes to deliver you because he's your righteous Savior. And that's why we celebrate. We admit, yes, that we need a Savior, but at the same time we look forward to his coming. And we will celebrate his first coming in a couple of weeks when we celebrate and worship him at Christmas, but we go on beyond that and every day of our lives we celebrate that he is called Yahweh our righteous Savior and day by day he saves you day by day he protects you day by day he comes to you so hold on to him hold on to that wonderful king who came in such humility hold on to him as you read the word Hold on to him as you remember your baptism. Hold on to him as he comes to you in his body and blood that was shed so that Yahweh could be your righteous Savior. Hold on to him because he's a delightful king and only good comes from him. So hold on as you celebrate. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the peace of God which surpasses all human understanding, guard your hearts and your minds. In Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen.